Hello, everyone. Uh, the next presentation is on Packet. Fedora release is automated by Mate, Laura, and Francis Zep. So, hello, everyone. I'm Francis Zep, and together with Laura and Mate, we'll shortly describe what Packet is and how it can help you with the Fedora releases. So, what we have prepared for you. So, for those who doesn't know Packet, so we will shortly describe it. Then we will describe how actually the Fedora workflow wo works, so how it looks, so you can see how it can, how we can help with that, and also what are our future plans. And since we are scared of your questions, we have prepared a few instead of you. So let's quickly uh, start with the Packet project. And so. We, ha we have a project called Packet, and it has two goals, actually to bring upstream and downstream together, or more closer together. So upstream, it's something like GitHub or GitLab, or actually the place where, where the source code is being created, maintained. And then we have downstream, like Fedora, RHEL, or other distributions. So we are trying to to bring those two ecosystems together. So we are trying to bring downstream feedback back to upstream. And also uh, we are trying to help with like getting the code from the developer right uh, to the distribution. So for example, you can install the application on your laptop, for example, more easily. So uh, this is basically most of the system we use and on the left, you can see that uh, the Gitforge, it's GitHub or GitLab, so Packet can act as a CI system. You can trigger copper builds or run tests through it uh, from your pull requests, commits, or maybe releases. So that's the CI part. But we have also full automation, and uh, as a reaction to the upstream release, we can do a lot of stuff and this will be described later on. And if you don't believe us that it makes sense to use Packet, so just ask these uh, users or people maintaining these projects uh, how and if they are happy. So you might know a few these. So, and uh, these are the avatars you might come across. Uh, these are the main contributors uh, to Packet, uh, these are the people from the Packet team. But since we are open source projects, so there are more people around. We are participating, uh, like in Google Summer of Code or Red Hat Open Source Contest and other uh, activities. On and since we are open source, so anyone can help us to help other maintainers. So let's start. Uh, with the Fedora workflow. Okay, so uh, in order to explain you how we automated uh, the release process in Fedora, uh, let's firstly have a look at how the workflow uh, looks like. So in the one end we have uh, upstream, so the place where the development happens, uh, as Franta said, GitHub, GitLab, uh, and on the other hand, uh, we have the user who just wants to install the application in his Fedora operation system. Uh, in upstream, uh, the trigger is uh, some release. So for example, GitHub release. Uh, and when release happens, uh, usually a source archive is created. And this archive firstly needs to be uploaded to the so-called Lucasite cache. And Lucasite cache is basically uh, a database of archives. Then we have also a distribution git. And distribution git uh, is a git forge where for each Fedora package there is a repository. And in this repository uh, there are multiple Fedora packaging related files. Uh, most importantly, uh, it is a spec file. A spec file contains information about the package and then um, how the instructions on how to uh, build the package. And the other important file uh, in this git uh, is the sources file. 
and sources file contains the name of the archive in the Lucasite cache and the SHA hash so that it can be verified. Um, so that was the distribution git. Uh, as a next step, when the distribution git uh, is updated with the new version of software, the software needs to be built uh, via uh, official Fedora build system, which is Koji. And then as a last step, we have the Fedora update system, Bodhi. Uh, so uh, the builds need to be submitted in Bodhi. Uh, and then after fulfilling some predefined requirements, for example, uh, after some period of time or after receiving positive feedback from other maintainers, the uh, update can be actually pushed to stable, which means that it can be actually used by the end users so the new version can be installed, for example, via DNS. Uh, this is the picture which shows you the whole workflow. As you can see, it is not that straightforward. So let's have a look at how does Packet help uh, with this process. Here you can see the exactly same picture, uh, but now with um, uh, some details on how Packet helps. So we can basically divide this process into three steps, which are covered by Packet. The first is syncing the release. Uh, so Packet uh, can bring the upstream changes downstream, uh, meaning uh, Packet can upload the archive to Lucasite cache and then open a pull request with usually the spec file change where the version is changed, the change log can be changed as well, and also the sources file is changed. Uh, for this, uh, users can utilize two jobs, uh, propose downstream and pull from upstream. They are basically uh, doing the same functionality, but the difference is in the trigger. So let's start with the propose downstream. Propose downstream needs to be configured directly in the upstream repository, so Packet needs to be installed as a GitHub application or uh, as a GitLab integration, and then Packet can react directly to the GitHub or GitLab releases. And uh, the benefit of this is that uh, there is also uh, feedback uh, in the upstream Git repositories in form of commit statuses on the release commits. On the other hand, there is a disadvantage that uh, some Fedora package maintainers don't have access to the upstream repositories or they don't have the code in GitHub or GitLab. And therefore, we recently implemented the pull from upstream job. And this job uh, reacts to the upstream release monitoring Upstream release monitoring monitors a bunch of uh, upstreams, uh, so besides the basics as, as GitHub or GitLab, uh, it can be PyPR or NPM. Or and uh, in this case, user needs to add the packet configuration directly to the disk git repository, so the upstream repository doesn't have to be touched at all. Uh, since the workflow uh, can vary across uh, different packages, uh, users can also customize uh, the actions via some configuration options uh, so that, uh, for example, the changelog generation can be customized or uh, additional files can be synced from upstream to downstream uh, or they can solve issues when the upstream tags are different than the versions, so the schemas are different. Here you can see an uh, example of a pull request diff uh, created by Packet. And basically the only manual step, step for the maintainer is that uh, he or she needs to review this uh, pull request and then if he's satisfied, he can merge them. And then uh, if there is a configured Koji build uh, Packet job, which uh, the configuration you can see in this slide, uh, Packet uh, checks for the new disk git commits with the spec file changes and uh, creates the builds automatically. By default, Packet uh, reacts only to the merge PRs uh, by Packet, but this can be also customized via the configuration. And then, uh, if there is also a body update job configured, uh, Packet also checks for successful Koji builds and can automatically create the body updates. 
So that was uh, quickly it for uh, the automation of the process. And now Matteo will uh, describe some predefined frequently asked questions. Right, so when we attend the conferences and we talk about the packet, we usually get a lot of questions and those are usually things that people are interested in. So one of the most asked questions is the question, where do we store the configuration, right? So packet is basically a CI, so you want to just commit, you just want to create pull requests and not really care about it. And the question is, okay, how do you configure it? So you can put the configuration file in your repository and uh, if you use packet in upstream, of course you put it in the upstream. And uh, to the respect with other jobs, for example, propose downstream, which creates the uh, updates in the disk git, you put it into the upstream branch where you would like to react to the releases. And uh, to the other jobs like pull from upstream, which should not touch the upstream repository at all, you just put it in the downstream and uh, it's just the default branch, so it reacts to release and uh, creates it to all targets that you wish to. And uh, with respect to Koji build and uh, body updates, of course, they are downstream uh, part of the automation, so it's just stored in the uh, downstream. And uh, people don't really like uh, mixing the packaging uh, files and the any maintenance that you need to do with the upstream projects and it's uh, not really liked. So one of the things is uh, the question that uh, you can also of course configure the pull from upstream so we don't need to touch the upstream repository at all. But in the fact, you don't even need to have packet allowed in your disk git because all you need is a file. So we don't need any access to your repository. We just create forks, we open pull requests, and the changes should be reviewed by maintainers. And uh, one of the other things is that where can you see the results? So we run copper builds, we run Koji builds, uh, we run test farm, uh, testing farm jobs. And uh, you can uh, see most of the feedback in the commit statuses, which is a bit more complicated with GitLab. But uh, apart from that, we provide also a package dashboard, which is a work in progress, where you can see most of the jo all of the jobs with their respective logs. And uh, apart from that, you can also subscribe to federal notifications. And uh, yeah, if something fails, we usually create an issue. You can configure this, so if uh, this git job fails, something on the downstream like, like pull from upstream or uh, propose downstream fails or body update creation, you can configure any repository where we create the issue. And of course, if something fails, cause well, it happens, we, there are many services involved. There is a network, of course. So these uh, things can happen. Only this week we had two GitHub outages. So yes, it happens. So what can you do? In case of GitHub, you can just retrigger from the rerun checks. So GitHub uh, allows this functionality. And apart from that, you can just post the command and uh, if it's prefixed with the slash packet, we react to it and we do our job there. Right, so since it's automation, one of the things that developer needs is uh, very good documentation so he or she knows how can they customize it and what it allows them to do. So we have very extensive documentation. Some parts are even duplicated, so there's too many things that you can find there. And uh, if you search, you can find it. If not, just yell at us, we will fix it. And uh, this brings us to the current plans and what do we plan for the future. And uh, we, you can, lately you can uh, see what our current goals are on a GitHub Kanban board. So we have it publicly. You can see all of our current epics that we are working on, how's the work going, etc. Of course, you are welcome to contribute. And uh, 
just to sum it up, uh, we are right now working on making the uh, downstream automation more robust. So of course we need to retry a lot of stuff. For example, as I mentioned, the network errors and stuff like and stuff like that. So we are making we are working on uh, retrying that. Apart from that, we are also working on uh, monorepo support. So that's uh, been a pretty asked uh, thing to be supported. And apart from that, we have recently implemented the support for building VM images via the image builder, uh, which is, uh, well, kind of in a beta phase right now. And apart from that, we would also like to be able to test those created uh, VM images on a testing farm, which is a pretty good asset of our project. And I guess that sums up. And also, uh, if you are interested in testing farm, there will be the next talk actually in this room. Uh, so make sure to join that talk. And now Q&A. So is there any scripts to generate, uh, say, say some co-post uh, source files? I, like if you need to just grab more files from upstream and create one archive for it? Is it possible to automate it in Packet? No, no, yes. Uh, yeah, you, you can uh, like tweak various steps we, we, we do. Uh, we have so-called actions, so you can like redefine what we think that it should be done by default. So you can like various things can be redefined. So if you need to like, yeah, s b basic, basically th that v various things can be tweaked and also when downloading the, uh, instead of downloading the source, you can like build it or Mm. I mean, uh, can you, for instance, download all the files and, I don't know, change it somehow or? Yes, yes, yes. And it, uh, it needs and some tweaking, but, but yes, uh, a lot of stuff can be. So added. also, and uh, how is the spec file updated? Can you have some script to update it or can you just create some template to update it? Or B By default, we uh, like bump the versions and in, uh, correct, the name uh, correct the source. Uh, and mm -hmm. improve the uh, like the change log, new new change log entry. Yeah, yeah. But you you can also define this step uh, yourself. Uh, and I mean, can you have your own script to? Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh, okay, thank you. Basically, in the actions, you can define uh, anything, any script, any command, and this this will be run in an isolated environment. So. Any more questions? Maybe worst case you can uh, let, let us know with, with your specific use case and we can happily help. That usually works the best when people reach us uh, via matrix, for example, or yeah, we can. Sorry, and <laughs> it may be very silly question, but uh, Pakito can accommodate not just RPM type packaging, but also Debian Ubuntu type packaging as well? Uh, so uh, by now we support ju just the RPM based uh, uh, like implementations or backends. So for upstream projects, yeah, you can use it for example as a CI system using the testing farm. So it's like independent. Uh, yeah, by now we don't have capacity to, for example, the open so, uh, open build system to support this. So we would be really glad to support more, but currently as a team, we, we, don't, we don't have capacity to work on that. But for example, if any student is like willing to spend some time on that as a bachelor thesis or as a GSOC project, so we would be really glad to like mentor that.
Okay, uh, sorry, I missed. Uh, do you do any of the Koji builds automatically, or uh, any Koji build needs to be like triggered by the maintainer? No, the Koji builds are also done automatically by us as a reaction to um, these git commits with spec file change. Uh, do you have any estimation uh, how much more builds are you making? Uh, in comparison what the maintainers would do uh, if he would do that uh, by hand. Uh, how, how, how much more workload you put on the Koji system. Also, uh, are you uh, mm, submitting the task with uh, normal priority or some lower priority? Uh, yeah, regarding the numbers, we don't have any, like, we know how many builds we are doing, but, but we don't compare it like for, for, for the user itself. So uh, yeah, uh, no numbers with that. And regarding priorities, we use the default one. And uh, yeah, it can be also so tweaked in a way that not, like we also check the, like the who triggered that or who merged the, merge, uh, this, this git pull request. So, so you can like uh, react only on a subset of changes. Uh, so, for for example, we don't automatically build like the master builds or commits like that. So we, we don't mix and match with with someone else. So, but if there is an ask for some other tweaking, maybe we can think about it or help to implement that. And maybe regarding the Koji builds, we, al we can also do scratch builds directly from upstream if this can be something in interesting for someone. Any more questions? If not, let's thank our speakers for their presentation.